All right, I'm Richard with Google. Uh, Armand, tell me who you are and what you do. Hey, Richard, happy to join. My name's Armand Dodgar. I'm one of the co-founders of HashiCorp uh, and CTO there. Awesome. So we're talking multi-cloud today. Uh, why do multi-cloud things? I mean, can't you just stick to one cloud? Why are people using multiple clouds? Why make our life unnecessarily hard, you're saying? That's right. Um, you know, I think what we've seen is there's probably like three or four, I'd say independent, but like each compelling drivers on their own. You know, one reason I'd say is the clouds have differentiated technology, right? You say, great, I want to use the best of breed, you know, AI ML services that Google may offer. I might want, you know, O365 and managed, you know, Azure Active Directory. So great, you know, there's a compelling reason to use a different cloud. So I think each of the clouds has a set of compelling technology unique to themselves. I think that's one. I think a second reason ends up just being pure M&A, right? Like, great, you're a giant company. You went all in on one cloud. You bought a company, went all in on a different cloud. Welcome to multi-cloud, right? I think a third compelling reason we see is sort of regulatory, right? You're a bank. You're, you you want to move to to sort of cloud-based services. Your regulators are forcing you to say you have to show us that you can operate in multiple clouds and do a failover uh, before we'll give you sort of approval. And I'd say then the last you know, two pieces of it is like, you know, either you're operating in certain markets, maybe China, for example, where, you know, there's uh, less choices or you kind of get pushed into specific clouds. Um, and then, you know, the last piece of might you might have a business relationship with these different vendors that drives you to, to say, hey, I'm going to consume multi-cloud. So I think all of those are valid uh, and we see all of those in practice. Yeah, that's great. Now, you've been writing, I think, for the new stack, a series of articles looking at different dimensions of multi-cloud, which I think has been a nice nice way of framing it because it can sometimes feel like an all or nothing, maybe, sometimes in vendor messaging or even when you're doing your own cloud strategy. So you, you talked about things like data portability or data multi-cloud workflow. Can you talk about that just a little bit? What are the sort of areas where people start framing a multi-cloud plan to adopt? How should they slice that up? Yeah, it's a really good question. I like the way you said it. it's like people treat it like this binary of like you're either multi-cloud or not multi-cloud. And our view is, you know, if you ask people what multi-cloud means to them, there's sort of five different definitions or more. And so for us, we sort of broke it down and said, I think there's four really clear definitions of multi-cloud as we see it, right? One is what we call workload portability. One is what we call workflow portability. One's what we call data portability. And one's what we call traffic portability. And I think each one of them has different implications in terms of like, okay, what does my investment look like? How am I consuming cloud? What are the constraints I put on myself? Um, and I think there's almost a, a graduation criteria. You sort of have to do the simpler versions of multi-cloud before you can get to sort of the panacea of, you know, I push a button and seamlessly move traffic from one cloud to the other and, you know, no loss of data, for example. Which one's the hardest? Uh, for sure, I think that kind of panacea of you, right? Like I think if we say, I want to get to that point where I can, you know, have my data and in any cloud and push a button and I just instantly say from you know 100% of traffic here to 100% of traffic there. I think that requires just a really high bar of investment uh, in terms of you know to get there you have to have you know your data replicated right so you have a data portability question of you know my data has to be on multiple sites and I have to be doing active active replication. It means you need a consistent workflow so I have to have a consistent pipeline that lets me deploy my app to both sides uh, and be able to push a button and change you know where is the thing running. I need you know, that, that sort of implies the workload itself has to be portable, so I'm not using sticky services in a cloud, so that constrains what I can actually use. And at the final tier, my app has to be aware that I'm doing this, right? So if I have multiple layers of, you know, business logic that's doing things like caching or transactions that might not be able to span uh, a multi-cloud environment, like my app might break. So I think it's everything from it becomes a application investment, it becomes a platform investment, it becomes a CI CD investment, it becomes a tooling and a workflow investment, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's sort of the, the pinnacle. Now you mentioned there though, and you touched on it, that some of these can kind of naturally, I mean, it's be harder because you use the unique services of each cloud. Your first answer talked about that. So one reason people do multi-cloud is there's unique services in each one. So do you think that adopting multi-cloud necessarily forces you down the sort of lowest common denominator? Well, wow, maybe I should use a unique service in this cloud because I can't find it in another one. How do you balance that so that you still get the value of cloud, but maybe give yourself strategic portability where you need it? Totally. I think this is such a good question. I, I think it, what it brings you back to is in some sense is like, what's the, what's the reason you're doing this to begin with, right? Like, what was the business value? Like, were you just using multi-cloud to say you're using multi-cloud? Uh, and like, you know, why are you forcing yourself into, into sort of a lowest common denominator view? You know, I'm with you. I think if you're going to do multi-cloud, part of the value of it is you get these differentiated services. 
And so if you're treating it like lowest common denominator, you're sort of, you know, you're hamstringing yourself. You're not gonna get that value out of it, right? So I tend to think that that's a bad way to approach it, right? You wanna use the cloud for, you know, where they're differentiated, where you're gonna get their strengths. Now, I think practically speaking, right, there might be scenarios where that's not possible, right? If you have a regulator who's saying, hey, you have to show me that you can do a failover between, you know, cloud A and cloud B. Okay, well then you better pick things that are portable, right? Otherwise you're gonna have a really tough time proving to your regulator, <laughs> um, right? So I think there's, there's conditions under which you have to be more practical, but I think for most people, they don't have those constraints. So it's like, yeah, you should lean in and, and use the differentiated cloud services. No, it makes sense. I know we see that too. Well, there's brilliant answers. Thank you, Armand, for uh, taking some time to chat with us, hopefully make Google Cloud and just cloud people in general more uh, intelligent about how to do these strategies. So thanks so much for making the time.